Good morning in the house of Eva Kwasin, Abad Twasin, south of the equator of the African Chub, South Africa, the Republic of South Africa. Protocol observed. I greet all chiefs, paramount chiefs, in all nine regions, nine provinces, and I would like to explain why we had to visit KZN, the province. It is of one reason that we have to comply nationally to all province and their structures, as well as assessing and auditing our people in the humanitarian way to make sure that they are there and they are visible for our people to assist them in whatever humanitarian is needed to them. This is, this is um, His Majesty uh, Thomas H. Brown I, um, the monarch of uh, the National okay. Christian Kingdom, okay, the first indigenous people of the first indigenous people of South Africa. Oh, okay. So also um, we 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 are having this weekend uh, a humanitarian launch, okay, of KZN and KZN structures within our royal house. Um, so it's an honor and a privilege also to have His Majesty uh, down with us, um, even now, you know, to uh, uh, to do the humanitarian visit as well, you know, at uh, the, the premises. That's our Queen, Judge Janet Brown, our yes. Queen. That's our national chief whip, chief whip Brenda Cook. That's our paramount chief also of uh, Free State, uh, Free State, and that's our general. That's our general of our royal guard, uh, Chief Lawless. And I'm the paramount chief of Kaiserland. Okay. Uh, I'm very really pleased to meet all of you. It's yeah. indeed an honor. Nice to meet you. We honor to meet you because this is something that is really our heart's desire because we are with the humanitarian. In 2002, I had adopted a little boy and he was, uh, he had HIV, he was fully, what's the name, he lived until a day before uh, he turned two, he passed away. And um, uh, it's been my mission, you know, the whole time, that the, some way we would find a way and, you know, for not the cure necessarily, but a, a, a comfort zone and a, and a tolerance zone without the, the stigma because Absolutely. once, you, uh, because I could tell you stories about with my kids when they went to school, and yet it was not their biological brother, but the stigma that was behind them because they were associated with somebody with HIV. Mm. So that's why it's I'm driven by it, by the humanitarian side of it, and that is the reason why we thought we would come and start exposing what is not exposed. Absolutely, yeah. to bring education, education, and education and all the time to our people because yeah, we absolutely. cannot stay ignorant all the time about absolutely. something that is it's an everyday life. So so you would know our director, Professor mm -hmm. Slim Abdul Karim, is the, he was the chairperson of the MAC. My general would know. Okay, you would know him. So he's the Caprisa director. Caprisa, yes. Yeah, so we are all staff Stop. members of Caprisa. Oh, Caprisa. So oh, my name is Peggy nice. Laidu, I'm the Deputy Director of Caprisa. Oh, that's nice. Introduce nice uh, my guys. name is Robin Weld and I'm part of the Caprisa Cares Committee. I'm um, Ricky Geldnes, also Caprisa Cares Committee and Head of Human Resources, so I can completely relate to the humanitarian <laughs> agenda. So oh, thank you for being here. Yeah. I'm Tobile, also a mem contributing member to Caprisa Cares Fund. So, so the staff contribute out of their disposable income to create a fund so that we can we can hand it over to deserving organizations and so um, we en ended up intersecting with you today our work for for two decades has been hiv prevention mm -hmm. and reducing death from tb in in south africans it's 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 research it's about being locally responsive and globally relevant mm -hmm. and recently we've also started doing work in understanding COVID mm -hmm. and its impact in our society so um really really it's honored and pleased to yeah. meet you Thank and you. want to wish you everything of the best with your work i think it's all these little pieces that helps our world be a better place. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Wish you well on your visit. This is for us today, ma'am. A privilege to be here. Um, I'm also new in this, but today I heard the questions that you stated. 
it's a big responsibility yeah to get a building at the moment and get funding and get sponsoring so we can actually learn today from this house what is our responsibility and what is it to take care of uh, our children and even maybe adults like your rehab centers and uh, HIV, <laughs> your abandoned mothers. So yes, thank you that we can be here today. So yes, I can go home and do now my homework as well. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you so much. Wow. <laughs> <laughs> I'm privileged, really. Um, as a father, a custodian of my people, my country, uh, that I'm brought out to such situations that is pleasant to look at the children, but unpleasant the background of sustainability, support for them. And uh, I've listened, I'm a good listener, and I'm a good doer. So give me homework for my office, I'll come back to you. <laughs> Thank you. Uh, good morning, my name is Donovan Timber Lamini Taut. Um, this is my story. Uh, when I was a newborn baby, my mom took me out of a moving taxi. I landed on my head. And uh, I had to go to hospital to get surgery. And uh, yeah, I wasn't too sure I was gonna make it, but obviously God had plans for me. And um, yeah, I just wish that uh, she could, you know, rather instead of doing that, she could have given me up for adoption or, or took me to the police station instead of harming me. Because now, after that landing that I landed on my head, it, ha it had long-term side effects and now it affects me until today. But I'm, I'm grateful and glad that I've been adopted by uh, wonderful parents and that they take care of me like I'm their own and they love me like I'm their own. I've also got three other siblings that I love as my own as well. My goal is to, to help others out there and um, to, to let others know that they're not alone in this because other people go through similar situations or different ones. So I just want to be there for them help them and share my story and let people know that they're not alone and together we can get you anything. I would like the king and queen to help me with, uh, with space, you know, to help me get the, some psychologists to help me get all this anger that is built inside of me. Good day, my name is Jenna Staff. I'm the founder of Isaiah 54. It's a home for abused, abandoned and HIV infected children. The home has been running for 34 years. The work that I've done is 34 years. Um, we uh, became an NPO in 2005. Um, and all that time, um, I was in the middle of the pandemic, of the, the um, HIV pandemic, and many times had to have one of our babies pass away in my arms. And it just made me more passionate for, for more, to be able to do more within the community. At the moment we have 13 children, possibly getting our 14th one in today, just assisting moms um, with their little babies because they've got nothing. Um, so we give them parcels, allow them to um, have something for babies so that they're not giving baby up for adoption because they have got nothing and encouraging them to speak to family, to be able to get, um, just allow their family to Yes, they get hurt when you've let them down, but allow the family to take that responsibility and assist their children. Um, we all make mistakes in life and as family we need to stand with our, our children and do what we, we need to do for them. Um, we have an online WhatsApp group that Joe runs. It's called Open Arms and that is where the pregnant mums, birth mummies get hold of her and she counsels them, she tells them about the options that she has, that they have, not forcing them to do anything if they're wanting abortion, explaining the psychological and the, um, the physical um, problems that you go through when you actually are aborting. Um, on the line that I do is my children. We run the home like a, a normal family home. I'm the mom, my husband's the dad, the caregivers are aunties, and um, we all live on the premises 
the aunties have their own little flat at the back and our children call us mum and dad. If there's an introduction to family members that are biological family, they become mummy and daddy so that we have the differentiation between the two. This is my life. I couldn't do it without or do anything else. I've been in the corporate world, the satisfaction that you have dealing with these children, seeing the change in their lives is absolutely phenomenal. It's more than any reward that you could ever give, um, more than money, more than anything, um, the satisfaction of, of having that. The battles we have uh, financially, it's really a battle to, to keep the organisation going, especially through COVID. A lot of our donors have lost their, their jobs. They're not able to contribute as they used to, but we're blessed and we've managed by scraping the pot and we do, do manage, but it's just the stress behind it for me is is what really gets um, I think my grinding of my teeth basically and yes get making sure that my staff have got paid because they have families to look after as well uh, making sure that our electricity is paid and not have to watch the gate and think that the municipality is going to cut off our electricity which we've had a number of times at one stage for nine weeks um, it brought our family closer because we could play the games that we used to do when we were children which was lovely but a hardship for the children because it's not something that I want for my children to have to go through and food wise clothing but the most important is keeping the organization running so that we at some stage don't have to close doors because then what would happen to those little ones what would happen to those teenagers we have in our house I've adopted four what would happen to them they've been brought up in the home they've been brought up knowing that I'm their mother, um, been with me from eight months, six weeks, seven weeks, six weeks. Um, they wouldn't know any other way but to be with us and with their brothers and sisters as they call them. So keeping it running, keeping it going. Obviously, if we had a bigger place, we could add to, to our, um, what we can put out there because we do help our community as much as we possibly can as well. So if we get clothing in what we can't use, um, we send a lot to Banana City, which is up the Westville area, and ensure that the, those children are warm. Um, we help our community. We have, they have a feeding scheme and gives clothing. We help them there. So whatever we don't use, we give away. Um, when I was called to do this work, the Lord said, never sell a thing because you'll break down the glory of God and I will not sell anything. So whatever we get, we give. So people say, please sell the clothing if you need it. It's impossible. I cannot do that. I have to listen to my dad. And he said, don't sell anything. So yes, but what an honor to have is your Lordship and the Queen come and, and visit us today. What an honor to actually be, a, them to be aware of, of what we do. And um, I'm not a person to be out there because I don't want the glory from humans. I want the glory from God. And, but what an honor. It just, I'm blown away. Thank you for everything. God bless. Very frail, um, you know, with the COVID infections, we, we must really protect them. They are very frail. Um, but yeah, otherwise, this is our reception area to John Dunn. We have the frail care unit, and then we have the assisted living unit, and we have a um, golden unit, which is sort of independent unit. Um, so this is on This is the king and this is the king and the queen from the Khoisan. Yes, yes, I know. Yeah. 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 It's one of our residents. 
and yeah, we have 30, um, 29 people independent and assisted living. And our care unit is 55 that we can have at this stage. Yeah. So, so but we're not actually full at the We're not full, yeah. Due to COVID, it's been a rough yes. year because we couldn't really admit like we usually do. Um, you know, this COVID really has halted a lot of stuff because we couldn't do what we usually do. Yes. Um, yeah, so isolation and that stuff, but yeah. We have a lot of uh, residents that are in isolation at the moment because they went to the hospital yes. and when they come back we put them in isolation to protect the others and just to make sure that they are okay before we let them mix with the others. Yeah. Well, thanks uh, for allowing us today. No problem. Um, in the old age home. No problem. First time visiting the Dan's house. <laughs> That's the first time? Yes, okay. first time, yeah. Perfect. Coming from Gauteng province. Oh, okay. Yeah. Yes. I've lived there. It's so nice hectic. hearing from others as yes. we're moving into this area of uh, humanitarian yeah. ambassadors for the humanitarian. We yes. listen to others and learn from them. True, true. It's, it it costs a lot of patience as well, I, I, I think so. <laughs> But it's nice with yeah, you know, it's, really and nice. especially in winters, it's yes. a small community. So, you know, I think community-wise, because it's such a tight community, the community is really involved and we've got the people. So, yeah, it's, it's a nice community to work in. So we're not complaining, yes. but it's yes. nice to work with the elderly. The passion, eh? yes. Yes. You, have you have to have passion and you need to care for people. Otherwise, yes. you know, yeah, you doing this job has... No meaning and no sense. So, yes. <laughs> but yeah, we love our elderly, yes. so everything we do, we do to protect them and make sure that they're um, okay. On behalf of the Royal House, uh, first indigenous of the southern tip of Africa, we are in a process now of crusading the country as first indigenous to record all the areas in humanitarian, the need so that we must also have an, an, an archive as to where the critical points are yes. and as well as the awareness campaign uh, of us as the Royal House. So it's really an opportunity to introduce to you, my sister, our chief work. She's the main artery of uh, discipline in the house, the Royal House. Oh, okay. So I must <laughs> mind what I say. <laughs> And uh, this is our delegates. We have the general, national general. He is the national general of the Royal Guard. Okay. He is from all nine provinces. Uh, it's really for me an opportunity to experience how our people in society is moving around on behalf of humanitarian. Um, our chief work. She will report. We have a national nerve center, which is she's the head of the nerve center. Uh, okay. She records and she will stay in communication with your administration board. Okay. And then we will find a way forward in humanity. Okay. I just want to so this is Sister Delisha. She is in charge of the key unit. Wow. Um, yes, she's my nursing service manager. Myself, I am a sister, but um, I just got promoted to area manager. So currently I'm the area manager of the south and of this building specifically. And then I've got Raven Kutsia, which is my um, social worker for this area. Um, yeah, so my other team is just busy down there. They're doing some training as well. So yeah, but this is our team. Thank you very much. Thank you yes. so much for coming Thank and you. so much for showing us. We really appreciate. Yes. I think, um, yeah, you know, the elderly, some of them hasn't got family. A lot of them haven't most got family, of them most of them. Or and if they have family, the family doesn't actually come and visit them yeah. often enough. So, so you know, we, it's really... We are the only family there now. Yeah, and need-wise, you know, the community, it's really not a rich community. So a lot of the elderly, you know, need the small things like we take for granted, spray, yes. cream that we take every day for granted. 
is for them actually a gift because it's something that they can't afford. Yeah, they so, don't have. You know, we take it for granted every day to have cream to, to clean our body for them. It's it's a real gift. So wonderful. Should I take your official greetings? As far as I could say to all other institutions, yes, you may. that we are connected <laughs> you may. No on behalf you of may. the Nerve Center and the Chiefs. Uh, may they also do it like that? Yes, yes. they may. They may. No a problem. pleasure. Okay, yeah. Thank you <laughs> very much. Thank okay. you very much. Thank you very much. Stay blessed. Okay. Thank, Thank you. Stay safe and have a Thank safe you. journey back. Thank, Thank you. you. Yes. Thank you, Thank you so much. much. It is the second historical event for my visit as the Royal House and its leadership. We have come to launch the Evacuation House in the manner of the awareness campaign. We have also toured around the areas where needed and we also witnessed the circumstances, the poverty, the unemployment rate of my people in the KZN area. Surely this was observed and this has taken a momentum to give recognition to the province that is a cultural province. It is a province of the Zulu nation, the kingdom of the Zulu nation, but we give recognition and acknowledgement to this kingdom. Okay, my name is Mervyn Roland Dunn. I am one of the grandsons, great grandsons of the great John Dunn, a historical figure, somebody that you can Google up at very short notice. So I've come from a legacy of chieftainship. My great-grandfather was um, inaugurated and ordained by the great chief, I mean the great king, Getiwayo, who ordained John Dunn uh, chief of, of Zululand. And basically my grand, great-grandfather, great-great in fact grandfather had, he had 48 wives and 49 with his um, colored wife, Catherine Pierce. Um, he basically had many, many children, and that you can Google up and check out for yourself. I won't go into the detail on that. I think um, there's enough detail if you need to Google this, um, the, the history of the Duns. Um, I've met uh, His Majesty, His Highness, the king, the Amatua king, um, uh, Thomas Edgar Brown and his wonderful wife. I've met them and I was inaugurated the um, chief, the Dun chief. Uh, so uh, we went through a, an, an incredibly um, touching and uh, heartwarming occasion being uh, ordained and inaugurated it was something incredibly uh, life-changing. I did imagine that I would come into Mandini and, and do some important things there, things that might have an effect on the people around there. But um, having met uh, Thomas Edgar Brown, his Highness Thomas Edgar Brown, you know, uh, I have um, had a life-changing experience. This is the um, the Sand Movement, and essentially, uh, I think that it's going to grow into something incredibly, uh, I would say, profitable and advantageous to South Africa. I think that we're going to have. Uh, some benefits, extremely um, huge benefits out of this, uh, out of this amalgamation, out of this um, uh, union of the Duns and the Sands, 
and, um, and the rest of the country, and I think that we are, essentially going to uh, uh, change and revolutionize the way we as South Africans operate. I do have the hope and the faith that this can happen, and I do have the hope and faith that it will happen very soon. I see changes coming. There's, there's winds of change. Taking in account the first Aborigines, my people, the Sen, the Evaqua identity. Within this process, I want to congratulate the House of the Evaqua Sen of His Highness Chief Brylan for his outstanding work that they have done launching as the host of the KZM. Royal Highness, King Thomas India Brown, Her Majesty Janet Brown, Chief Whip Brenda Cox, KZN Paramount Chief Brylan, Senior District Chief Jason. We'd also are very honored to have with us this morning and would like to welcome all Paramount Chiefs across South Africa, from the Abakasan Royal House, the different provinces represented. I just would like to welcome everybody. Be proud of being a Pikwa, Purana, Nama, whatever you are. Be proud of who you are. Identity colored was never our identity. It was given to us, forced on us. It was never ours. So today we are reclaiming and restoring what we were oppressed against. So we are proud to stand here today and in Your Majesty, we thank you for the opportunity that you've given us, adopting all of us and bringing us into this house under your wing and you become our adoptive father and we know that our ancestors are guiding you and Your Majesty the Queen, we thank you for adopting us and making us your children and that we know that we have a mother and a father in the house. We are grateful for that day and we will, we are, we will always, always do our best to honor the house of Abba Kwasen, the royal house, the cultural house. I am proud to stand here today and say that I am a Frikwa. I belong in the house of Abba Kwasen because of you, Your Majesty. Thank you. We acknowledge our Kubaha King Thomas F. Brown, our Honorable Chief, our Honorable Queen, Honorable Chief Wok, and all the paramounts of the different provinces. Chief Brian Wok and his executive. Today is a historical day for us as the Upper Kwasen Royal House. The cultural observance of today is our way to honor our ancestors and to unapologetically claim back our cultural rights. We are honored to be led by a man of integrity who has sacrificed a lot for the people of South Africa by accepting his calling without hesitation to lead the nation 
towards a better future. Kumaha, we honor and we thank you for your mission. Even, even the governments that we and the government, the, even the president government, some of them told us that we didn't have a culture. So what happened? Because we were, we, we were nomadic, right, and we came over with colonization and pushed us away, with apartheid and pushed us away, you know, everything just kept on pushing us, pushing us, pushing us, and pushed us to a place whereby we had to create our own culture and what our understanding was of culture. But we didn't know in hindsight also our grandfathers were teaching us how to make these things, how to make, because why it was embedded, it was in our DNA. We used to trap birds as I mean, in our genome, we used to trap them, we used to go and hunt a, a wild boar and so forth. And this is what we used to do as hunters, you know, those years, it was there before. So as much as we want to restore, we're going to need a relation, we're going to need a people are coming together. All the clans, all the smaller, uh, you know, chief, our, our, our chief, this is why he's here today. Everybody coming together, we have our home. Come back home. No pigmentation in our royal house. No discrimination. We believe in the equality of our people, but there is a first of equals, and that is our majesty, and that is his majesty and our queen, and that's the monarch. And that's the culture that we want to start in Sinstoril, but then we're going to need everybody coming together. This is what's going to take us forward, and this is what's going to make us grow. To make an impact, not only in this generation, but our generations to come. So we're going to crawl, we're going to hop, we're going to skip, but we're going to get there. And we can get there together. In you, physically as I can see you, and even spiritually, I also greet our ancestors that have been before us. 1901, Section 34 of the Union Building, it was declared that the same people, the abattoir, it was abattoir. Now with the modern literacy, it's abattoir. It was declared that the abattoir tribe is now virtually extinct. But they forgot they are strangers on this playing field. They don't know the actual places of secrecy to hide. Now, yes, over time, or 400 years up till now, then it was in the 18th century, then the blood was starting to creep out of the mountains. And this blood is what we see today in an emblem in the house of the our, to our same people. Dear Heavenly Father, Lord God, you have created heaven and earth. You that have placed the positions of the stars of the heavens. You have set the planets on its place. Oh Lord, be merciful.
I congratulate all those stakeholders, those who have contributed with their hearts and even practically, physically, right up to the ground. We have supported the endeavors that His Highness Chief Brylan of the Sand People. My name is Brylan, Brendan Cock. I'm the Senior Provincial Cultural Chief of the National Khoisan Kingdom, appraising the Abakwa Sand Royal House. And our cover, current government now has made a decision and actually given us our voices back so whereby we can operate or we can actually have a say in our own name and our own right uh, from the 1st of April. That's the the traditional Khoisan Leadership Act, which has come into commencement from the first. Um, with this act, when I look at this act, certain criteria within the act, uh, speaking about um, the, recognition, uh, the recognition of kingship, the recognition of queenship, speaks about the president, the minister, the premier, uh, recognizing us as a royal house or recognizing so-called Khoisan people, um, as a as kingship as a monarch and this criteria that government now has set out you know politicizing uh the old act and one of the criteria is that obviously you know it's 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 left it's 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 left for us to look at is the is that governments are saying okay we need to prove that we have been practicing our culture um, all these years. But what has happened? Because colonization, because the apartheid, because all these systems, all right, has actually, has actually pushed us away from our culture. And we've been told all these years that we don't have a culture. Um, when they looked at us so-called colored people, the colored, the term colored is actually a derogatory, derogatory term and derogatory word. You know, it's like calling, it's like calling there in America, you know, it's like calling a Negro nigger. You know, it's like calling over here in South Africa, calling us colored people or calling us colored people is actually like, like you're calling us a nigger. You know? So I think terminology, we need to get it right, number one. Number two, there's no way that we could actually practice our culture because why? You moved us away from practicing culture into the city, away from our land, away from what our forefathers used to do. And now you place us within a city whereby we had to formulate our own culture because why we were ostracized. And to a point that our culture is almost extinct. Okay, and th this is not, uh, it's not a secret. Uh, it's well known. Uh, the world knows about this. And um, look, wanting to put that as a criteria, I think it's actually mischief. It's mischief in the sense that um, you give us back our voice. Now you want us. Now you want us to prove that we've been practicing our culture. What our people have done is that because we have been told that we got no culture, you know, um, that our forefathers have sold our land for wine. Um, the what has happened is that those words spoken over our people, our people actually adopted that and accepted that as a norm. And I would say that we have actually normalized the wrong. The culture that I think must be restored is the culture of family. KZN province have done in a successful manner where it will be recorded in history. I pledge all of our strength, our knowledge and wisdom together with all structures of the ninth province to support the humanitarian efforts and activities of the Abakwasan people that will start as from today and we will remain and will be faithful to our people in all the endeavors to succeed and become a normal society where everyone will enjoy as citizens of my beautiful country, the Republic of South Africa.
I think the House, and especially all the stakeholders that contributed within this journey to the KZN, I think 